the new president of Michigan International Speedway, Joe Fowler. Hi, Joe. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Welcome to JTV and welcome to Jackson. Thank you. It's how good to be here. How do you like it so far? Oh, we love it. It's a great area. We're having a blast. It's, it's nice. Summer months are finally here, so we're out and about and checking out the area and seeing things we've never seen before and, and just having a good time. Nice. Well, uh, everyone at uh, MIS that I know is really excited to have you on board. Uh, and you've you. been there, I think, since late fall. Yeah. So uh, I took the position at the end of October. And then, uh, naive me, I thought it would be a pretty quick move. <laughs> it took me a couple <laughs> months to figure it out. But I actually moved up in, in December. And uh, my wife is with me. And we're settled and established and having a good time. Well, I think one of the things uh, the community is excited about is the background that you have in racing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president uh, before you, he came from uh, minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. So having someone from you know auto racing and, and particularly a NASCAR track, I think uh, that seems like a good match. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, I've been in the sport for about 19 years. Um, I started my career at Kansas Speedway, actually right out of graduate school, mm -hmm. and uh, started in sales. And you know, as your careers do, you you accumulate more and more responsibility, and next thing you know, you've got. Uh, some other things under your wing and so I, of the 19 years in the sport roughly um, 17 of them were dedicated uh, to Kansas Speedway and then when NASCAR and ISC International Speedway Corporation merged um, then I took on a role as a, in a regional role in marketing on behalf of NASCAR and so that's actually what brought me to Michigan for the first time last year in a completely different role but it gave me a chance to kind of see the track and really get to experience the area and uh, yeah it's great. Nice. Uh, did you grow up as a uh, race fan, as a kid? I did. Yeah, I did. I grew up, my parents and I, we would go to dirt track races. We'd go to, you know, local asphalt track races. Mm -hmm. And that's just something we did as a family. We always watched, you know, Daytona 500, et cetera. And then it was when I got into college, um, I, I went to a dirt track in, in What's fairly traditional at those events is after the event is over, you can go down into the pits and meet the drivers and crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met a gentleman, kind of hit it off with him. He was local. And I said, look, if you ever need help, um, I'd love to come to the shop and just learn a little bit about the cars and what you do and what it takes to run a race team. And, and he called me actually a couple <laughs> weeks later. And so, you know, that's really what got me more interested in the business of, of motorsports as well. But yeah, I'm a huge fan still to this day. I watch every week. Uh, I'm passionate about it. It's, it's uh, something I, I truly love. Well, here we are. One month from today is the Firekeepers 400. Yes, sir. The uh, big race of the year at yeah. the track. Uh, one, one race uh, a year since uh, last year. And I was looking at your uh, track's <coughs> Facebook page earlier today, mm -hmm. and it seems like every one of your fans wants a race uh, in June as well. <laughs> sure do, <laughs> yeah. No, I hear about that all the time. And, uh, you know, I, the, the June race was great and, and there were a lot of schedule changes. And, you know, one of the one of the casualties, I guess, of that change was was us moving to one race weekend. But I, I'll be honest with you, I'm thankful to have the race weekend we've got. It's, it's a, a great time of year. It, it's kind of leading into the playoffs. It's uh, when a lot of the action's happening and, and teams are starting to jockey for position to get themselves into the playoffs. So it, it's really good racing. It can be a little warm, sure, but it's a great time of year for a race. Yeah, I think if, uh you had to lose a race, the June race uh, would be the least, uh, with the schedule building to the climax closer to August, you, I think you do have more, more interest in the, in, in, in the sport. So I know that some tracks uh, lost all their races. So yeah, yeah we, I think as a community, we are grateful that we do have one one race, and it looks like you guys uh, you're going to make it uh, well as big as if you did have two races. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. The work is the same if you have one or ten of them. It seems like, but um, things are really shaping up well. I mean, you know, we're doing a lot to the property, painting things, fixing things up, getting them ready. You know, we had a storm last uh, last August, excuse me, and so. Uh, there was some, some work that needed to be done, but the team's going full bore. We, we have so much to do and, and prepare for, but uh, we're really looking forward to the race weekend, there's no doubt. Yeah, it's such a uh, show place with so many amenities added in recent years, including the Champions Club, all the infield improvements. And I understand that you're going to be returning a uh, hospitality area to turn four this year. Yeah, we, you know, we, we started asking questions to our fans and we said, you know, we moved to Sydney infield with good intentions and, and we think a lot of people liked it, but we said, would you rather have turn four or would you rather have the infield? And uh, overwhelmingly it was turn four. So I said, well, hey, let's move it back. No problem. 
So we're, we're moving it back to turn four, and uh, in the infield we'll have a, a hospitality area for some of our corporate partners. But, uh, yeah, that's what the fans wanted, so why not make it happen? Well, I, already camping is, is, if it's not already sold out, it's pretty close to it. Yeah, we have a, a ton of campsites on property. This is the largest registered campground in the state of Michigan, and, and the infield is wildly popular. It's about 2,500 spots. About two weeks ago, we announced it's sold, it sold out. Wow. Uh, and some of our, our perimeter spots, we'll call it, are overlooking the track. Um, those are sold out. We still have plenty of camping available, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's it's really popular. And I think it's part of the culture here, too. You know, I, every time I'm, I'm out and about, I see somebody towing a camper or a boat. <laughs> and um, That's one of the things that makes Michigan you know, International Speedway special. I think camping is just a, a part of the fabric of our brand and, and who we are, and that's why people love to come. We've seen uh, so many changes that have occurred uh, in the sport during COVID. Uh, one, obviously, no fans yeah. for a whole year. Uh, are we back? Did, did that have any long-term, uh, provide any long-term damage to the sport? You know, I think we're back, um, and I don't think it did any long-term damage to the sport, honestly. You know, coming out of COVID, our, our sales have been strong, interest has been there, and, and you know, call it what it is, I, I think getting a chance to get back to the track was what our fans really wanted. And, and our Canadian guests, as an example, they haven't been to the track since 2019, so mm -hmm. we're hearing from them all the time, we can't wait to finally get back, we can't wait to get back to the track. but. Yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot. We've got, you know, some, some tricks up our sleeve this year. We're going to add some things to our fan plaza, and I think it's going to be a, a different experience when they get to MIS this, uh, this August, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But, yeah, it's good to have people back. Yeah, I know uh, NASCAR has a lot of Canadian fans. You've got, you know, Watkins Glen, New Hampshire. You've got MIS. So, so many Canadians do uh, yeah. make their vacation plans around mm -hmm. a NASCAR. Yeah, and it's amazing too. I, I was talking to a, a gentleman the other day, and he lives two miles from the track, and he still comes to camp. It's just part of the experience. <laughs> he loves to do it, and so we bring fans from all over, no doubt. Well, we've got uh, the Firekeepers 400, but the race weekend is um, you've got Xfinity Series, uh, ARCA. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's on Saturday two. Two races. races. Yeah, it's a doubleheader on Saturday. It's going to be a, a full day of racing. Mm -hmm. uh, from the time you get up, we're going to have practice and, and, and all of that going on. And then you've got the NASCAR Xfinity Series race. And then later that afternoon, you know, early evening, the Arca Menard Series, Henry Ford Health uh, 150. It's, it's, it's going to be an action-packed day, no doubt. So I'm curious, uh, you know, with your experiences, uh, really at all the tracks, but in Kansas and what you see here at MIS, are there some things that you uh, – want to do or some things that you want to add to the facility or the experience? Yeah, to the experience on race day, sure, we're always thinking about that. We're going to add something this year called uh, Trackside Live, and it's going to be a, a stage, in a sense, uh, in our display area. And we'll have DJs and live music and driver interviews and Q&As and all of those things. And we're always working on, you know, ways that we can improve that experience. But, you know, outside of just the race weekend, something that I always look at is how we can use the property. You know, we try to think of ourselves not as a, as a NASCAR track, but as a multi-purpose property, mm -hmm. a multi-use property. And, and I think my predecessors did a really good job of that. You know, a good example is, you know, the music festivals we have. We've had uh, Formula SAE. They were here twice this year, which is a great use of the property. It's great exposure for, you know, bringing in young people to come check out the property mm -hmm. in a very relevant way when they're building these cars and uh, having competitions. We, we have driving experiences where fans can come out and actually drive a race car on the track with a, with a little bit of instruction, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's really thinking outside the box and trying to use the property year round in, in maybe ways we haven't done before. So I, I wish I could tell you we have two or three things lined out right now, but we're always thinking about it. And, and that's really important to me is just making sure we're using the property in the right way. Yeah. And, and in fact, Faster Horses uh, returning later this month. And I know that's mm -hmm. not uh, an MIS event, but it's a use of the facility that fits into that that uh, scheme. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a great example of a creative use of the property. The um, SAE uh, visitors to Jackson, I've noticed when they're here, they're, um, they're packing the local restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people staying overnight. Uh, it continues to be not just the race weekend, but all the events that happen at MIS, big uh, tourist attraction to the community. Mm -hmm. How does um, MIS uh, look at Jackson uh, and tell us about your thoughts about uh, the community and, and the partnership between the track and the community. Yeah, you know, Jackson is a huge part of, of MIS um, and, and not just because we're right down the road. And it's something we talk a lot about, Bart, honestly. Um, it's, it's the idea that 
to be a part of the community, being close by doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being part of the community, active, engaged, uh, and involved. And so that's something that we're always we're always working on too. And you know, it, it's funny. I think this relates to your question. I, I went to the Kansas race in May. I went back to help, and I, and I was sitting there for a very short period of time when I had a chance to watch cars go around the track, which I don't very <laughs> rarely get to do. But it, it clicked, and and it was the fact that the the chassis for the new cars are actually made here in Jackson. So everywhere they go around the country, the NASCAR Cup Series cars that are out on the track, they're made right here in Jackson, and they're made with steel that comes from, you know, here in Jackson. And it's just the roots uh, in our sport and, and the connection to the automotive industry is, is a big deal. And so it makes Jackson really special. Yeah, the um, auto racing uh, legacy of the community is pretty, yeah. pretty deep and pretty long. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we do have manufacturers still in, in automotive and auto racing. Here in Jackson. Yeah. Uh, the next gen chassis. It's next right here. gen chassis built right here. Yeah. yeah. And one of these days I'm going to go over there and check it out. Where, keep, is, it? Keep, Where is it made? Uh, Technique. Technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, um, Ronnie John Cox, owner of Technique, has been uh, very involved in racing yeah. uh, his whole life uh, as well. Uh, and we've had um, people like Pat Patrick uh, from Jackson, mm -hmm. who was a big part of Indy racing Absolutely. Uh, for many years. And Roger Penske will swing through Jackson every now and <laughs> then as well. Occasionally, sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, the additional uh, things throughout the year, mm -hmm. um, Christmas time, uh, night lights, uh, you do uh, weddings, you do proms, you've got um, the automotive companies come in and, and use MIS yeah. for testing. Uh, seems like year round you've got something going. We really do, and you, know, you think about the the larger track property itself, you know, you're sort of limited by the, the seasons and the weather with the exception of night lights. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I think is really neat. Um, but yeah, we, we use the facility year round. We have everything from, you know, small concerts, community events, meetings, you name it. Um, and that's why it goes back to what I was saying earlier, just being creative and always thinking about the next thing that you could do with the property, especially, you know, for the community. Well, it certainly gets the kids to the track. Uh, I think a lot of people that um, go to night lights it's their first time yeah. that they've been on the track property. Yeah. Kids, though, is a special target of NASCAR. Mm -hmm. You are doing things, well, I think you offer free admission uh, for kids. Yeah, right. so uh, on Sunday for the NASCAR Cup Series race, we have uh, you know adult tickets start at $39, youth tickets are 10. Uh, for the Saturday race, which is a double header, the Xfinity Series and the Arkham Menard Series uh, date that we mentioned earlier, it, yeah, 12 and under are free for that mm -hmm. event. And so it's a really affordable way for parents to get kids out of the track and expose them to, you know, what we do and something new and exciting. And uh, we're really proud of that. Having the uh, infield camping uh, sold out uh, this early, that to me is a surprise because I don't think it's been, I think you could buy a camp mm -hmm. spot uh, on the infield on race day. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, you know, and there's always uh, there's always a little bit of opportunity here and there. It seems like as you get closer and closer to you know nab one up at the last minute. And I, I won't say that I'm shocked we sold it out, but I, I'm I'm proud that we did. I think it's the first time we've done that since 2012. <laughs> so it's it's pretty impressive, and and it's uh, you know a testament to the hard work of the team, but also just the interest from the fans and. Um, I, I'm telling you, Bart, I think that the next generation car, what it's done for our sport right now and uh, what it's doing for competition and, and just uh, interest in general is, is truly unbelievable. And, and the fact that they're coming to MIS to make the debut right here in the, you know, the automotive industry's backyard, it makes it even more special. So it's, it's neat to see the interest pick up. It's neat to be able to announce sellouts and things like the infield and all. And we still have a ways to go and we know mm -hmm. that, but we're really excited about where we're headed. It always seemed that um MIS was, uh, for a driver, mm -hmm. the, the, the most uh, anticipated destination, their favorite track. Mm -hmm. Being an outsider, uh, was that, did, did I have the right impression? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, people love to come to MIS, and we had a test, a tire test, and don't get me wrong, I don't hang out with drivers every day, <laughs> but we had, a, we had a tire test a couple weeks ago, and I went down to introduce myself and just say, hey, thanks for being here, and they were there to, to test to make sure that they're putting a good product on the track when they come August 6th and 7th, and um, I had a chance to talk to one driver in particular, he says, this is my favorite track, hands down, to come, and I said, well, for what reason? And he said, it's just the atmosphere here, and it's one of the reasons I love being here, too. We're, we're, we're like-minded in the sense, he said, I get here, you can go hiking, you can go boating, there are things to do, it's just, it's like you're out in a 
in a national park almost. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's not uncommon. We hear that from fans, we hear that from drivers, uh, people that come in from our industry. Michigan's a special place and it's a destination. You know, it's a, it's a place on the calendar people look forward to. Yeah, and a, a super fast track. Super fast track, yeah. yes. I know when Indy cars were running, they had to, they, they actually had to, to govern their speed. Yeah. Uh, because it was just, they got out of control. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, you know, two mile track. So I, I came from Kansas, like I said, it was a mile and a half track. And one, when you look out the window and you see the track every day, it reminds you like, man, this is a big place. Mm -hmm. This is huge. But when you see the cars hit the track, that's when you really notice the difference in size and just the speeds that they hit. It's, it's, it's awesome. So you told me before the show that um, you moved here first, and then your wife. Uh -huh. um, tell us, tell me a little bit about your uh, your family and what you like to do outside of uh, racing. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm married. Uh, Ash and I have been together. I met her back in my hometown years and years ago, and we moved up here in December. We we don't have any children. We have uh, two very spoiled Australian Shepherd uh, <laughs> dogs and a couple of cats, but we're outdoors people. And and you know when I found out that. Uh, possibly coming to Michigan might be an opportunity. I, I, I did, I raised my hand and I said, this is a place I really want to go. And I did that without my wife's approval in the beginning. And I said, look, let's, let's talk this through. And it, it, but the point is she got up here and fell in love too. And, and it's because we are outdoor people. Um, you very rarely see me inside. As a matter of fact, if you drive by the house any given day, I'm on a mower or grilling something or <laughs> doing something outside. So, you know, it's what we love and this is a great place for that. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. But, you know, just on a personal level, you know, I'm, I'm really close with, uh, with Ash. We like a lot of the same things. She's uh, studying to be a, a dietitian, and uh, the next step for her is just to get her board certification. And so I'm proud of her for that. And she's looking forward to starting her career up here too. But uh, yeah. Great. Well, we we in we in Jackson, so she'll she'll be able to get a job. Yeah, yes. good, <laughs> good. Well, it's great having you here. Thanks for coming in today. It's good to be here, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And we'll it. look forward yeah, to the uh, big NASCAR weekend, August fifth, uh, sixth, and seventh. Uh, Arkham Menards, Henry Ford two hundred, New Holland two fifty, and the Firekeepers Casino four hundred. And That's tickets it. to all of those are available right now. Available right now. You can go to our website. You can call us. But yeah, August sixth and seventh. We hope you join us. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you so much. Uh, the new president at Michigan International Speedway, Joe Fowler.